In this tutorial, we're going to create conditional menus in WordPress, meaning you could potentially have a different menu for every single page on your site. We're going to use it to have different menus for when people log into a website in this example. And I give you all the code. All the code is going to be on my blog. You can copy and paste it and use it on your site. If you have any questions or comments for this tutorial, please leave them down below. I try to answer every single one. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And we'll get started on this video right now. To get started with these conditional menus, what we need is a piece of code, which you can find on my blog. There's a link in the description down below. Take you to this page, and if we scroll down to the very bottom, I've broken the code out in chunks, and I explained every piece on here. But the full code is right down here. And it's going to do four things for us. The first part is it's going to allow us to switch menus based on what type of user is logging in. So you can have a different menu for your admin than you do for your customers, than you do for anybody else who's not logged in. It will also allow us to redirect users after they've logged in. So the admins will be redirected to the dashboard and the non-admins will be redirected to a page of our choosing. That's what this second piece is right here. And the third piece, this fixes the login confirmation issue that some themes have. Most newer themes don't, but if you're using some older themes or some themes that aren't coded with the latest standards, if someone clicks log out, they'll be asked to confirm that they want to log out. This piece of code bypasses that confirmation because it's really annoying. Someone clicks log out, they want to log out. They don't have to ask them again. And the very last piece allows us to redirect someone who logs out to a specific page. And those are the four things. And you can use each component individually if you want. I'm going to make separate videos for each of them because they're in-demand topics. But we're going to use all of them for this tutorial. We're going to do it on this website. Right now we have just one menu system with a login button. We click on this, we have a login pop-up. We're currently logged in, so it just says currently logged in. And this is built with Elementor Pro and a plugin called Profile Builder. If you want to see a tutorial on how you do that, there's a card for it up above. There's a link in the description down below. Check out that tutorial. And we are going to now make another menu because we want to switch menus based on who's logged in. So we're going to go into the dashboard. We're going to go to Appearance and then Menus. I'm just going to create two more very simple menus. So the main nav is going to be the nav that's there for everybody who's not logged in. I'm going to create a new menu. This is going to be for the admins. So I'm just going to call this admin menu. I'm going to add logged in just so we're clear on what this really is. So this is the logged in admin menu. Click on create menu. And I'm just going to add something very simple, which is just going to be hashtag admin menu. So we can tell it that's the admin menu. And I'm going to add another one. It's going to be the log out button. The log out link that we have to use is our website address. And followed by WP dash login question mark action equals log out. You can paste this snippet from the description down below. It's also in the code. We can see it right here. It's a comment, which means it won't actually be executed, but you can just copy and paste it from here as well if you're using this code. And that will create a logout link. So we're going to add that to the menu. And then we will save this menu. And then we're going to create one more menu for logged in customers. It's going to close some of these notices here. And we're going to make this menu pretty much the same as the one we have, not here, but on this website. So it's going to have home, about, contact, Elementor Pro, and then log out. So let's click create new menu, logged in customer menu. So I'm going to call this, click on create. And we're going to have services about contact Elementor Pro. Let's rearrange these to what we have. Looks about right. Contact Elementor Pro. Let's add a home menu or a home link. And we're going to add our logout link again, which is our website domain name wp login question mark action equals logout. And let's call it logout. Add to menu. Let's put home as the first one. Click on save menu. The reason I did it this way. I want it to have it be almost like this one, 
which is what you'd normally have. Normally the menu wouldn't be as small as the one we made for the admin. So this is more of a real world example for this menu. And this would be the menu that's shown when a customer is logged in, a non-admin person of your site is logged in. So now we have those two menus created. Now we're gonna go and use this code. Let's copy this code. Let's copy that. And now we're gonna put this code into the functions file of our theme, specifically a child theme that I have on this site. If you wanna know how to make a child theme, there's a card up above that takes you to a child theme tutorial. And there's a link in the description down below for the same tutorial. It's from a number of years ago, but it still works the same way. And child themes allow you to add code to your theme, the functions file or CSS file, or make edits to template files that are then not overwritten when the parent theme is updated. That's why we use child themes. And child themes really haven't changed all that much in the past, I don't know, since they came out years and years and years ago. So that video that's a few years old, still works just fine. I'm just gonna log into SiteGround so that we can go and edit the functions file for my child theme. Here on the SiteGround cPanel, I have not updated to the new demo or new version of the cPanel yet. Some years may look a little different if you're using SiteGround. What I'm looking for is the file manager, a place where we can edit the files. You can do this via FTP as well, if you're more comfortable with FTP. So open the file area or the root directory for the website. Go to WP Content and then Themes. This is where our child theme exists. If you follow the tutorial I referenced earlier, you have one of these folders as well. And in here, we just have a functions file and a styles file. I'm gonna click on the functions file and click on edit. And this code up here pulls in our parent style sheet and the style sheet from the child theme so that you can add CSS to your site without having it overwritten when the parent theme is updated. And it also updates with the new styles when the parent theme is updated, it pulls those styles into here as well. So it's, it's dynamic. So I'm gonna paste in that code that we copied and there's a few things we have to edit. So first of all, this big line of text here, this is a comment because it's preceded by these two slashes right here. So this sentence is not actually executed by the server. It's just for your information. And you find these throughout this code in various areas. It's here and there's one here and here and here and here. And I'm just basically describing what the code is doing. So it makes it a little easier to use. So what we have to do first is replace this. And in this comment here, it says, this menu will be shown only to logged in admins. So we have to add in the name of the menu for logged in admins that we created. So if we go back to menus, the menu we created was this one right here. I'm gonna copy this name. Copy that, I'm gonna paste it right into here. And I'm gonna make the letters all lowercase. Instead of spaces, there's gonna be a dash and it's all lowercase. So this will pull in the admin menu when an admin is logged in. This one, which we replace as well. This menu will be shown to any logged in user that is not a site admin. And that was this menu, logged in customer. Copy this and paste it in there, right there. Make it all lowercase, no spaces, dashes instead. And then the last one is the default. This is the navigation menu that's gonna be shown to everybody, including logged out users, users who are not logged in. That one is called main nav. So let's copy main nav, paste it right there. Same as before, lowercase and no space, wanna have a dash. If you do not put dashes in here, for example, if I just take this out and logged in no dash, the website is not gonna pick that up as being the menu. So the spaces have to be dashes for this to work. So this is gonna do our menu switching and that's all done. Now let's go down to the next piece. This is gonna redirect people after they've logged in. And what we have here is first the administrator is going to be redirected to here. So this is the dashboard and that's where I want them to go. But you can replace that with something else if you want. So you just put the part after the domain name as that location. So if you wanted them to go to the menu page, you would put this in here. wp-admin forward slash nav-menus.php. And that would take them right to the menu creator when they log in. But I just want them to go to the general dashboard. So that's where they go there. For the users, the customers, the non-admin users that log in, 
they go to a My Account page. And I don't have this page on the site currently, so I'm just gonna use a different page. Let's just try the About, see if that's a page. Yeah, that's a page. Let's just have About Us and put that in here. So now when a customer logs in, they're gonna to go to the About Us page. Down below here, let's go look around my microphone. We have Logout. We don't have to do anything here as long as we created our Logout link to have this structure. So it'll be our domain name, followed by this piece of code or this URL string, and that will then work. It'll then skip the confirmation, do you wanna log out? And the very last one, we send people to wherever we enter in here after they log out. So you can do the same thing as here, you could send them to the About Us page, or we're dynamically inserting the home URL. So if you want them to go to your home page, don't change anything. This will pull your home URL from your website and place it in here, and that's where people will go after they log out. If you want to have a specific page that's not the home page, do it like the other ones, like we have above there, and just have quotation marks, and then add in the part after the domain name. And then here in this case, they go to the WP admin, which doesn't make any sense because they just logged out. Anyway, I'm gonna keep it as the home underscore URL. Let's save that and let's see if this worked. Let's open this website in Firefox because I'm not currently logged in there. Let's zoom in a little bit. So we have our login. This is our existing menu that we see or that people see when they're not logged in. So that's fantastic. So now I'll click login and let's log in as the admin user first. And this should redirect us to the wp-admin. So into the dashboard right when we log in. And here we are, right into the dashboard. If we go back out to our website, we see we have our admin menu, which is just admin menu and the logout link. Click on logout. And when it logs out, it should keep us on the home page because that's where it redirects us to. So it'll redirect us right to this page. Click on logout. Let's try that again. There we go. Log out, now we're back to our usual menu. Now let's log in as a customer. Go to log in, click on log in. And now this should redirect us to the About Us page. Log in, and there we have it. We're on the About Us page, and we have the log out link. Click on log out again, and it goes back to being logged out. And that's how it works. And this header is created with Elementor, Elementor Pro. Anywhere where you have menus like this, you can switch them out using this method because Elementor Pro just pulls in the menu that you created in the appearance slash menus menu creator. So anytime you're using any page builder where you use the WordPress menus, they can be switched out in this method. And as you saw, it retains all the same styling. It's not like there's this crazy looking menu because you're now logged in, it's a different menu. It's just the links and the text that have changed and that's how simple it is. A few important notes about the conditional menus. You can condition the menus based on a lot of different things. Right now, this is the conditional menu function right here. And right now we have it conditioned so that if a user is logged in and the user can be administrator, then we show this menu. Or else if is also another way of saying or in normal language or if a user is logged in and they are not, this little exclamation mark means not an administrator, then show this menu. Then I also turn off the admin bar with this piece of code right here because the not administrators don't need to have the admin bar at the top of the website. And then for the regular menu, we just have this. But those conditions, there are lots and lots of conditions you could potentially use to show different menus. If we look up WordPress uh, conditional logic and go to the WordPress codex, I'll put a link to this page in the description down below. But these are all the different things that we can use to condition our menus. We can have a menu appear if it's the home page. So you can have a different menu just for your home page or the front page, which you set under settings and then reading or the blog page or the admin area, not the admin user, but if it's the admin dashboard. Uh, let's see, if it's a post, you can have it for all posts, so you have a different menu for all the posts. You have a different menu for 
Using this, you can have a different menu for all the posts. Using this, you can have a different menu for, in this case, just post ID of 17 or any post that you want. You can have a separate menu just for an individual post or you can base it on the title or you could have it on sticky posts. They can have different menus or on archives like categories and tag pages. Uh, the, the pages can have different menus. Page templates, you get the idea. Scroll through this page, there's a whole lot of different ways you can condition your menu appearance using this piece of code. So you just replace this if area. So if you wanted to have, let's take an easy one, a different menu if it's the home page. Just copy this. Copy, come in here, replace this whole thing. Let's delete that. Now we have if open bracket close bracket and we paste in is home. You don't need these extra spaces just for readability, for human readability. If it is the home page, then show this menu. That's how easy it is. I'm going to undo that. So we're back to how we were. But that's how we can add conditional logic, change conditional logic. You can have more else ifs. So you can go unlimited else ifs. So you could have if this condition, else if this condition, else if this condition, and on and on and on. Just copy this right here, start at the else if, and to the closing curly bracket, just copy that. Just come down here and don't overwrite the else. Paste the else if in there. Let's add our spaces back. Now we have two else ifs. We can have a different condition in here for the second one. If you want to add another one, paste it in again. Now we have three, four. You get the idea, on and on. Just make sure, as you saw, I'm very specific about making sure that we don't overwrite any of the curly brackets. Depending on what you remove by accident, it could take down your website. So just make sure that your syntax is correct. And that's really all there is. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below this video or leave them on this blog page where you get this code. And if you have any problems, we'll try to figure out what the problem is, figure out how to fix it. Uh, but that is how you use this code to create conditional menus in WordPress based on when users are logged in or logged out. And now check out this tutorial right here where I show you how to create the login pop-up that you saw throughout this tutorial using Elementor and a free plugin. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer every single one and make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Until next time, my name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.